Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into Screw the Cubicle TV. I'm Lydia Lee, the founder and corporate escape coach from ScrewTheCubicle.com. Thank you so very much for joining us for another conversation about living an unconventional life and getting the inspiration that you need for your own career reinvention and life transitions. So today, I'm really excited to welcome a very good friend of mine uh, and for the series for the Corporate Escape Stories. I am excited to interview Anne Perry from Elle Society. Um, Anne is the reality architect, I love that title, uh, of Elle Society, which is a digital society offering creative ways to experience life connected to what matters most and a simplified path to make your most of your inspiring dreams possible. So after spending her adult years burdened by debt and suffocating in jobs that drained the life out of her, Anne has reinvented her life. She set up ways to work remotely while traveling around the world and has spent a decade living in living tiny, or what, how she calls tiny in cottages, uh, motorhomes and houseboats. And she has since built several successful businesses that allow her to make a difference in the world, doing exactly what she loves with the freedom to take baths always important on Tuesday afternoons. Thanks for being on the show, Anne. Thanks for having me, Lydia. It's always so fun to chat with you. I know, and it's been several years. It's been a few years since we actually had an interview together because the first time I ever launched the podcast, you were one of the first guests. Yes. Well, we interviewed you, but it's oh, been yes, a while right. since you've interviewed. We're like, we're like uh, Alan Baldwin on SNL. We're, we're like repeat guests. It's I know, fun. exactly. That's right, yeah. <laughs> And for all the people, I mean, the, the podcast interview with, with you did so well. People absolutely loved your story about, you know, especially when you talked about like being really broke and having to make this decision and this turning point of your life. And I think a lot of people feel that way, you know, that, that something has to give. Uh, so I would love for you to sort of tell us more about, well, first of all, what is L Society about for people who don't know what that is? And how has your own personal story uh, led you to create this awesome community called the L Society? Sure. And just for those of you um, going, is it L Society? What is it? Because when you say it, else, and if you're listening, <laughs> else, yeah, else, E-L-S-E, -E, as in something else. Right. And um, really what it is, is, um, I mean, you and I are definitely sisters from another mister because mm -hmm. it's, it's basically living an unconventional life. It's choosing to opt out of the, you know, stress, struggle, sacrifice, tolerate, overwork, overstressed, Ooh. overburdened, overobligated way of doing life that we're taught somehow is the responsible path. And it's choosing a new path, like designing your life according to your desires and your gifts and more of what matters to you. So that's what Else Society is. It's a, it's a group of folks who are you know, looking for something else and, and committed to creating it and mm. choosing to believe that just because it's not normal doesn't mean it's not possible. And <laughs> all you have to do is, you know, step in. And once you're in, you're in and you're, and you can, you know, shift your whole reality just like that. So um, and how, how did this whole community come to you? Because I know, you know, in the past, if people have listened to the podcast interview with you, you, you were the founder of uh, Business Heroin Magazine at the time. And, and you were like, probably a serial entrepreneur doing a bunch of little things, you know, here and there. How did you like end up thinking about this idea for Elle Society? Yeah, sure. So yes, I, I used to run Business Heroin Magazine. And, you know, for me, I am an entrepreneur at heart. Like it's just, it's wired in my cells. And for me though, what happened was I got really clear about why was I interested in business in the first place? Why did mm -hmm. I want to be an entrepreneur? And, uh, and it just came down to my freedom. Right. And, you know, freedom from various aspects, freedom. And really, it came down to freedom of self-expression. When you oh. really boil it all down, it's like I was showing up to um, a job before Business Heroin Magazine back in my, my uh, working days. I was working for a nonprofit organization in Denver. And I would show up to this job. And, I mean, it was a lovely organization. And it was fine. But I was... I just remember wanting to do more. I actually kind of wanted more responsibility. Mm. I felt a bit bored with what I was tasked or, and there were things that I was doing that were um, really outside of my strengths that were in sort of my weakness zone, I guess. And so it was like, all I want to do is show up and make a difference doing what I love or, you know, and I didn't know what that looked like, but that was sort of what started me down the entrepreneurial path going, what if I could make up my own career that was exactly designed around, you know, how I want to show up in the world? Um, and, and what would that look like? So that was really the path. And so I, um, stumbled 
upon entrepreneurship. I didn't call it that at the time. I started an energy healing practice, actually. It was my very first business. Wow. Okay. Um, oh, see, I didn't even know that. <laughs> really? No, I didn't. Yeah. That was my very first business. I had been, as I was working at this nonprofit, for like $12 an hour, by the way, um, I was uh, getting certified in some energy healing modalities on the side. And I thought, what if I opened my own private practice? I could work less, do what I love, and have more life in life. That was my mm. big ambition. And um, so I, I really just took the leap. I quit my job and I started this practice. I got some clients, but I really did not know. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. And um, so I did get some clients, but it wasn't enough. And I started falling behind on bills. I started falling behind on my mortgage payments. That mm. is never good. Nope. Um, and I mean, really, I was, I had, you know, I, I had pennies and, um, and I was making daily decisions between buying gas to, you know, put in the car to go to one of my side jobs. I had picked up a few other $12 an hour side jobs to make ends meet, um, making decisions between that and groceries really. Mm. And, um, and, and when it all shifted was this one day. And I remember I was going to the coffee shop around the corner and I was counting my change, my spare change to see if I had enough money for a cup of coffee is like 97 cents or something. Right. And my cell phone is ringing in my purse and I know it's the bill collectors cause it's 8 AM and they would call me on the dot at 8 AM. I learned not to answer the phone by the way. Um, but I just remember going, God, like, why is this so hard? Like all I want to do is, mm contribute my gifts to the world. I just want to have a career that I like and be able to survive in return. Is that so much to ask yeah, of the exactly. world? Yeah. So that's, that's where I was at. And that was my something's got to give moment. And I right. just remember, you know, going, what if, what if I've thrown obstacles in my own way? What if it's actually not this complicated? What if I've made it more burdensome and difficult than it needs to be? And um, because I remember just looking at these birds flying overhead and I was like, God, it's so simple for them. They just, they just show up and go get a worm. And like, that's their life. Like, God, I just want to be a bird. I just remember thinking I was envious of these, you know, crows. And I was like, all right, when I'm envious of birds, it's <laughs> like, you know, maybe not a good day. Right. But, um, <laughs> but it was a turning point because I went, you know, what if life could be that simple? And so for me, um, having more that matters and it, it's just, it's kind of a coming back to simplicity mm. and entrepreneurship is one path to, um, creating a life that feels fulfilled where with self-expression and, you know, um, being able to do what you love and, and be paid in return. That was one path. Um, but you asked me why, I, why else society and how that came about. I basically got really, really clear that it that I wasn't interested in business for the sake of business. I felt mm. like there was sort of this shadow side of the whole sort of online entrepreneur space that was just starting to, I don't know, rub me the wrong way. And I just remember thinking, you know, this isn't about industry fame for the sake of industry fame. It's not marketing for the sake of marketing. It's not even money for the sake of money and, you know, success for the sake of success. Like, what is the point of this? What is the mm. point of having a business, having an online business? And what it came down to was like, I just want to exist as me and have that be enough. That's it. And so entrepreneurship is one path to creating um, a life of freedom and ease and aliveness. Um, but there are other paths too. It's, you know, there's, there's other ways to, to create that and it looks different for everyone. So that's really where Else Society came around is it's the core of what it's been about for me all along. Mm. Yeah. And I love that you, you, you slowly transition into that new reality for you because obviously you didn't start with L society. There were sort of multiple types of businesses and directions that you did go. And I think that's what people are most afraid of, isn't it? It's like, what if I pick the wrong thing? <laughs> and you can never really pick the wrong thing if you're picking the thing that is best and most ideal for you at that moment in time. And maybe else did the idea for else didn't hit you in the face, like during that, you know, couldn't afford a 79 cent coffee moment. But, you know, right. it was like there's a ripple effect of, 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 of time and, and, and experience that now led you to doing Elf Society. I mean, how long has it been since that, min that moment of couldn't afford coffee to today? Like a few years? To today? 
That was in uh, 2005. So it's right. been 12 years. It's been 12 yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't have, I could not have conceived of Elf Society at the time. It would have been That's impossible. Right. Yeah. Um, there were, there were stepping stones I had to go on. There were detours I had to go on, like all of it, you know, it's, it's like all of it is this divine, perfect curriculum to create what is now, but I couldn't have skipped that. You know, yeah. you can't get the PhD when you graduate middle school, you have, right. there's some more steps or I'm not saying I have a PhD, but you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think that's what I, what I love about L society is because being in a community like that helps you to feel that nothing has gone wrong. If, if something feels <laughs> misaligned right now, it actually is an opportunity. Right. And a lot of us don't realize that it's an opportunity because it feels painful at the time, you know, when these moments, yeah. are, the, the something's got to give times so is we're like, Oh my God, this is not supposed to be happening. I'm supposed to be happy. But actually like the whole point, the whole point of you, you know, your body indicating to you that something is not right is actually just an alarm going, hey, let's find the, the better path, that better version of freedom, which could be different 10 years uh, later on. But right now, here's what we need, right? So, yeah, you know, I mean, absolutely. I'm, I'm in the same boat. It's like what I defined freedom as 10 years ago or five years ago is completely different about how I define it now. Like some things have, don't change, but you grow as, as, as that, that definition gets a bit clearer for you, doesn't it? Absolutely. And those something's got to give moments. They suck so much. But you know, sometimes what sucks is the strongest motivator, right? Totally. And um, I think I think it was Tim Ferriss said, um, I, I don't remember his exact words, but he basically said comfort is the worst thing ever because it just you you become complacent and you don't take mm. any action. And I don't know that comfort's the worst thing ever. I don't know if I agree with that because I think it's kind of nice to be comfortable, sure. but it's like, you know, there's those plateaus. And then when you're ready yeah. to go up another step on, on your staircase, it starts to get uncomfortable. And so mm. you're spurred into action to find something else. And, and, and that can be from, it can happen from two things. It can happen from desire or it can happen from pain, discomfort. Mm. So either way, you know, sometimes something you desire something or you're inspired by something, you just see a possibility you never would have thought of on your mm. own. Like something you see a movie or you have a conversation that inspires you. And then all of a sudden you get this like, you know, wild hair. You're like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm going to do that. And like, that's awesome. Cause that's, that's, that's like a great way to create, you know, right. the next stage of, of your life. And then sometimes it happens from pain and discomfort and being like, I cannot drag my but out of bed another day to go show up and do this again. I cannot, Ooh. you know, or like my body's breaking down and sick because I'm going completely against what my body says to do. Yeah. Or, you know, I have where the next dollar is going to go to hell. Mm. Just those times suck, but they, they, they it's like, basically says, okay, this isn't working. So you can, for me, actually, I find this to be a powerful place even when I'm feeling discouraged. And um, sometimes I'll just let it all crumble, even just mentally, you know, but if I mentally allow myself to say, what if I let it all go and like mm -hmm. really consider that, like mm -hmm. really consider what if I just let the whole thing crumble down to nothing. Right. And rebuild again. What happens? Yeah. What yeah. happens is clarity, like your truth emerges, you know? Mm. So yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's like, I, I think it, it, you know, that those moments are so critical for us to take advantage of because at that moment, actually, sometimes, as you said, pain is so motivating. I mean, that's definitely my story. It, it had to take pain. Unfortunately, I liked pain, you know, in order to make a move, you know, because you're right, being neutral, being comfortable sometimes just goes, Oh, it's not just not bad enough yet. You know, and it mm -hmm. had to get bad enough, you know, where I had to hit that floor in that Russia hotel room and have a complete meltdown. Mm. Uh, for me to go, oh my God, I have to deal with this. I haven't taken a holiday for two years and I've overworked at 70 hours a week. And what is all this for? Ah, you know, and you have that yeah. massive, um, crazy breakdown, but it's so important to have that to rebuild again, which I think is super important. Um, so, you know, a lot of your members in, in your community in L Society is, you know, one of their mandates is to try to define what their own unique definition of freedom is. And that is different from, for everybody, right? So yeah. when you look at the people that um, come into L Society, what are those different types uh, and definitions of freedom you see being desired most? Yeah, I love that question. So first of all, like we call it your else. What's your else? And um, so people say, you know, my else is like, 
you know, um, being able to wake up without an alarm and, right. you know, read and paint or like, it's different for everybody. Your yeah. else is your else. It's what, it's what you want. Um, so there's, there's so many millions of renditions of it. What I've found though, is that they really do boil down into five types of freedom. And it's like these this is pretty cool because when I realized like these, these are not just like types of freedoms that are like, Oh, that would be nice. These are actually, it's almost like they are secret, secret doorways to a whole other reality. That mm. These are the five things that have most people actually feeling trapped in the hamster wheel life. Like if, if these things are in place, you, um, you are obligated up to you know other people's energy or things that aren't your choice you feel like your choice isn't there right when these five it's almost like picture um these five walls collapsing and then all of a sudden you're in this completely different landscape so um i'm going to tell you what the freedoms are but i'm going to tell you like what the walls are because they're yeah. just sort of the, the flip so the first is um this is the biggest for almost everybody who comes to us at else society is the is the money mm. so it's the, the trap is working hard for your money and feeling like, you know, keep either. And it doesn't even matter. Like for me, my story, I was totally broke. I was counting my pennies to see if I had enough, you know, money for coffee. Your story, you were actually making great money, but you Most money were, I've ever made ever. Yeah. But yeah. you were obligated. You, you didn't have your life, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it doesn't even matter the amount of money. It's the working hard for the money. Mm. That's the trap. Mm. And the flip side of that is financial freedom, right? Like having mm. your money work for you instead of you working for your money. And yeah. most people um, come to us going, that feels like a complete dream. Like that's what I want, but it feels like a complete dream. But that's mm. totally possible. And each, each and every single one of these uh, doorways or walls um, also has like a specific combination lock. It's like there's, there are some very specific steps to create that and anybody can like we can it's 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 amazing so that's number one is the working hard for the money and financial freedom um the other one which is not at all the same as financial freedom but often gets confused um is vocation freedom um vocation meaning you know a career that you love so mm. that's not the same as financial freedom it can sometimes feel like that like i want to do what i love and get paid for it mm. and that's awesome but really like think about if you for 99.9% for .9 of us, if you were totally 100% financially free, you never ever had to lift another finger for money again, money was handled. All you have to do is whatever you want. You can just sit at the beach and drink umbrella drinks all day, every day. At some point, that actually would get old and mm -hmm. there would be something inside of you that's like, I want to do something with myself. Yeah. That's, that's the purity of that. vocation. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And, and that's where career comes in. Career is actually like a complete spiritual path. When you think about it that way, it's like, that's your, that's your Dharma. That's your work in the world. So your vocation is like your self-expression, being able to show up as you in the world, contributing your unique gifts um, and making a difference in the way that it's basically like showing up as you and having that make a difference and, mm. and creating from a space of the, of, for the sake of creating, like desire to create versus obligation or have to. That's a completely 100% yeah. different energy of career, mm. right? So, um, so the wall that most, or the shackles or the handcuffs or the chain, however you want to describe it, is um, you know, feeling obligated to other people's priorities, um, giving away your best life force energy for something that actually doesn't feed your soul. Mm. And the freedom is vocation freedom. And mm. there are specific things you can do to create vocation freedom, which you, you know, support people. That's my specialty. Doing exactly <laughs> that. Like that's yeah. your specialty. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, and anyone can do it. It's almost like there's, you know, as I don't know, there's a formula. I don't like it when people are like, Oh, there's this formula. You just follow the formula. But sometimes like there is, you can, when you really break it down, it's just, these are the puzzle pieces that need to be put in place. And there you go. Yeah, so there's, that's, a, there's definitely a formula, but the formula is different for every different individual. Right. That's the thing. Right. As, uh, you know, the work that I do is it's actually really hard to 
blueprint it actually because and you know the, the more that I'm like I need to make this into like a structured thing that everyone DIYs and paint paint by numbers and they'll get there and literally you can't do it because everybody's life is so different and so n know that everybody uh, who's listening here is like you've got your own formula there's not, not an yeah. Anne formula or a Lydia formula none of that will work for you because it's not truly who you are uh, and I think that's that's definitely a great point is, is knowing that you have those answers within you there's less external validation needed um, but you can actually do something that contributes into the world that's not just a money maker but something that really feels good to you right right and at the same time while it's your your unique customized formula or curriculum or blueprint there also are things that when that are that cover everyone right like yeah. so for example saying choosing your yes instead of choosing no like Perfect. instead of saying yes to what's a no Say yes to what's a yes and say no to what's a no and like right there like that's that's a that's an essential ingredient if you're going to be creating yeah. a voca your vocation that is you uniquely yours right mm. so that applies to everyone what your yes is and what your no is is totally different to everyone that's right um, yeah. and where you're starting on the path of being able to do that because that takes courage and dis and practice that's different for everyone as well right we're all mm. on our own path but mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. So those are the those are the first two. The third um, type of freedom that people are really really drawn to is location freedom. Oh. Um, so being able to be anywhere in the world when you want to, as opposed to being you know tied to having to show up on somebody else's agenda. Um, so location freedom can look different for everyone. Some people you know want to vagabond around the world and you know experience every country um some people like how you travel lydia it's like you have a home base it's in right. bali it's not where you're from but you you can travel whenever you want but you get you also like having roots where you are yeah I'm the blessed. same way I, I like having roots yeah absolutely and for some people it's your hometown and it's just you know being able to work from home if you want to maybe you want to even go in the office it doesn't matter but it's just having that freedom of choice mm. around where you get to show up when you show up That's and right. then the other two types of freedom that are um so this was really interesting as i started to talk with people whenever i'd ask you know what's your else like what is your dream life if you could wave a magic wand um what always comes up is um, just checking my internet real quick because I got a little warning. Okay. Um, <laughs> what always, <laughs> what always comes up is, um, home, like yeah. what, whatever that is, like what your home is. So, um, you know, the, the chain or the wall is it's twofold. So one is either, um, feeling ostracized from home ownership, whatever that looks like. Like I'm outside of that. I'm outside of that club and I don't know how to get in mm. or it's um, it's being, you know, sort of maxed out kind of like almost being a prisoner to your own home, you know, like being stretched financially to where you have too much house for what, you know, it's like, it's almost takes away the simplicity in your life. So sometimes mm. there's that, um, or it's just not feeling matched with what home looks like to you. So again, different for everyone. Some people might want to live on five acres in a little tiny house. Some people, you know, might want to have a beautiful home that they built. For others, it's not necessarily about even owning a home, but there is something about that home piece, having that handled, um, that, that is really important to people. Mm. Um, are we frozen? Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Oh, good. Okay, good. Yeah. And then the, the very last um, type of freedom, the fifth one is um, inner freedom. And, you mm. know, it's one of the most important ones. Ends with that. It doesn't matter what you have in your external life if you are internally dis. So creating, you know, that's a path, right? Choosing your soul's path and um, continuing to say yes to yourself and choosing aliveness and surrendering to you know what is and all of all of that um, finding that inner peace um, you know yeah so important kind of for that actually because if, if the internal world is a mess the external world is a mess <laughs> it has totally to and yeah. even if on paper the external world is the most amazing thing you've ever seen yeah 
Um, you know, there are billionaires that are deeply unhappy. So it's totally. not, it's not the external things that make us happy. Um, and those external things matter too, right? Like all of it, all of it matters. Um, mm. But that's it. Like, so if you really think about it, it's kind of like, all right, what if I just decided to tackle each one of those, like either one at a time or somewhat simultaneously, like commit to it. Like yeah. I am choosing, I will be financially free. I'm going to do that. And so therefore these are the things I need to put in place. So I'm just going to do that because anything mm. can be learned. And any, you know, when you commit to it, you, there's just things you don't know or habits you don't have yet. That's it. Right. That's the only thing that's stopping us from a new reality. Yeah. It's, it's just a gap of knowledge or skill set or awareness, right? That's preventing mm -hmm. us from going from point A to point B. And I know a lot of people that listen to the, you know, when they listen to those five uh, different types of freedoms that you just described, they're going, yep, I want that. Mm -hmm, amen to that. But there's this, still this doubt that creeps in going, yeah, easy yeah. for you to say you have it. But right now where I'm at, um, it's just not happening for me. And, you know, there's this sort of like, you know, flimsy word that sort of gets floating around, which is like, oh, well, you know, just, just think about it positively and manifest it. Yeah. Right. We, we hear that a lot as this manifestation of your dream. And it's like not, you know, I, I always have a, I mean, I'll let, let you talk about this a bit more because I have a whole rant about the word manifestation and what it actually really should mean. <laughs> but there's, there's sometimes <laughs> I kind of want to hear your rant. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, because I live in Ubud, right? Like the biggest sort of like, new age spiritual community, which is lovely in a lot of ways. Uh, and, and also there's, you know, a lot of people coming here for that spiritual awakening or, or, or wanting to come here to, to live in an environment that allows them to manifest things a lot more clearly, for example. Mm -hmm, but what mm -hmm. I find that sometimes happens with this conversation is people start to say, well, I'll leave it to the universe to take care of me. Right. You know, the whole like Gabriel Bernstein statement, like the universe always has your back. And that is true. Correct. But what's sort of missing, I think, from from that statement is that you actually also need to be super responsible about being clear about what you want so that the universe can have your back, <laughs> you know, but you can't yeah. just leave it to chance or sort of um, I'm just going to leave my control of my life to this uh, God or universe or whoever you believe in to to dictate what your life should be. Um, and I'm sure you have, you know, this th thing around, you know, what's this mysterious manifestation and how, how to break that down to, to a more simple path. Because what, what do you think that really means for people? Because when, when people are about to start this journey of going, okay, I'm not happy with my life right now. I feel depressed. I feel, you know, misaligned, whatever it may be. And then the next question is, well, what is then my else, right? What is that next thing I'm supposed to do or the next chapter of my life if this isn't it? So what do you think is, is sort of that most important step to start if first someone doesn't know what their else is and also if they're sort of thinking, should I just be you know, meditating a lot and just manifesting this? Is it just my in, inside you know, positivity that needs to be uh, a little bit better? Like what, what are your thoughts around that of, of creating yeah. reality for yourself? But it does take work. That's my obviously my whole, whole rant about it is that actually you have to move to manifest it. There's no sitting, yeah, there, right? That's right. You have to move and, um, and take action. So it's not like, um, so the universe is not just, you kind of go, Oh, you know, you do it. Like you said, everything you just said, it's almost like you think about it, like you're a team with the universe, you're partnering with it. So mm. if you're partnering, it's like, you're passing the football back and forth. Like as you both are running down the field, it's not just like, well, let me sit on the bleachers. You right. go do the touchdown. Plus, would that be fun? Like that's yeah. no fun to, you know, like there's something they're actually part of the inner freedom and part of just the joy of being human is that we are co-creators in the creation process. Mm. It's not wave a magic wand and it happens. It's we get to create. And so it does take action and it does take work, but that's not the same as, as, um, efforty struggle. I, I heard the definition of struggle is effort laced with negative emotion. Mm, so that like that. is not the energy to create what you want. So if you're struggling, if you're like tolerating, you know, if you're drudging through, that's not the kind of action that manifests or creates what you want to create. Um, mm. But it's aligned, aligned action is what is how you create what you want to create. And when you're in aligned action, that's when you've like hit a stride. And that's when it's like, that's when the universe, that's when those miracles show up. Right. So, right. um, and there is something as well, you know, because I, I don't, I, I know that positive thinking and gratitude are important, but I also think that they're missing the mark a little bit because you can't just 
put frosting on top of like a right. pile of mud and say, oh, it's a chocolate <laughs> cake because right. I have frosting on it. <laughs> That's right. You know, like there's, there, sometimes we do have those like on our knees moments of Ooh. surrender, like, please just help, just help, just help, you know? Mm. Um, that's okay. You know, when, like, it doesn't mean that we're supposed to be perfect. We're not supposed to be so happy all the time. Um, so that's, that's about that, the manifesting piece. As far as like, how do you do it? I mean, to me, I, my friend called me the reality architect. So I just said, oh, I'm just going to go put that in my bio because I kind of love that too. Yeah. But, that's, but it is very true. Like that, that's like what I feel like I'm here to do. And like, it's like, and we can do anything. So we just get to make it up and declare it into existence. Mm. Um, and how that looks though, it's like, so you said, you know, what about people who are like, what is my else? How do mm. I get there? Cause a, a lot of people are like, I don't know what my else is. Exactly. But I just know it's not this. Right. right? <laughs> um, so here's, here's kind of like a little framework for how that works. We start out, um, we start out unaware. This is like the cycle of the cycle of reality creation. Okay. Mm. You start out unaware. Like I don't, you don't even know something exists as a possibility for yourself. Mm. Um, so then you become aware. So you move from unaware to aware. And what happens around that awareness stage is you are either experiencing um, inspiration and desire or pain and discomfort. Like we talked about before, it's like you start, you start to awaken to this other possibility um, because either something really sucks. And so you just start like going, there's gotta be something else like, Oh, well, that person likes their job. Maybe I could find a job. I like, like a possibility is there because of this pain or discomfort, or it's there because you, you witness something that completely inspires you to consider just to consider a new path. Um, but, but it's important to just notice that that part can be uncomfortable. It's like when you, um, fall asleep on your arm and you wake up in the middle of the night, your arms just, you know, flopping and it hurts when it's waking up. It's like numb and tingly and it's uncomfortable. That's kind of the process of waking up sometimes. So we become aware. It's like the unaware is you don't know what you don't know. When mm. you're aware, you know what you don't know. You're like, there's something that could be possible, but I have no idea how or yeah. what that could possibly look like. So then what happens is you move from, um, the awareness phase into the exploration phase and you start exploring and you start kind of like window shopping what could be. And so it's like, what's important to notice about this is that a lot of times we can judge where we are and we can say it's a problem because I'm not there yet, or it's a problem mm -hmm. because I don't know where, what I want yet. It's not a problem. It's just where you are on that path. And we're all there, like in different areas of our life. We're all on different parts of that, right? So if you're at the exploration stage, maybe you're like, I want to find a different way to make money that doesn't involve showing up to a job. So you right. start looking, oh, I could create a t-shirt business. I could sell, sell things on Amazon. I could, you know, and you start just sort of shopping for what, uh, what, how do you do it? You're probably Googling things. How do I make money online? Like things like yeah. that. You're, you're just playing the, with ideas really. Totally. Yeah. So that's the exploration stage. And then, um, the next stage is the action stage. And that's when you've chosen something like that one feels good. That fits. Or like you said, at the very beginning of our call, like you have no idea where it's going to lead, but this yeah. feels right for right now. Right. Right. right so then right you now. take yeah. So then you take action. So that's the action stage. Um, again, about the manifestation, that's not the like sit there and think positive thoughts stage. Mm -hmm. That's the action stage. Right. Um, aligned action. And, um, and then, um, there's immersion. And so immersion is like, you've started to take action. Immersion is like, seriously, you like plunge yourself into that into that new reality. And I can speak for myself when I was, you know, broke 12 years ago, like going like this sucks, there's got to be something else. It's like, if I could have even had a crystal ball and saw what my life looks like now, I would have, there's no way I would have uh, even believed it. But now totally. mo most of my friends don't have like real jobs. Like that's not um, a crazy fantasy anymore. That's just what I'm surrounded by. It's the air I breathe. Um, and so that's what, when you, when you can immerse yourself, like whatever that looks like, whether it's like diving full on into a course, whether it's diving into a community of people who 
um, do what you, what it is that you want to do. Let's say Mm. you decide you want to invest in real estate and you start hanging out with real estate investors. Mm. And then like you, you, and this was actually an example for myself too. I went to this real estate investing meeting and I was like, um, I kind of sort of think I want to buy land and build on it, you know, cause everybody out, every, everybody sort of in the like normal world thinks that's really kind of that's like really risky and crazy and hard and difficult. And, and they're like, Oh yeah, you can do that. And I was like, Oh my God, that's so refreshing. And she's like, Oh yeah. And this, in this room, like any, all of the puzzle pieces are here. So that's immersion. Mm. So whatever that looks like, like diving into that, um, container where, where it's there. And then it's like, you know, continue action, continue immersion. And then you look around one day and you're like, I have a whole new reality. Like that's it. That's kind of what happens. Then you're like, I am in a completely new reality. Like right now, how I said, I am in a whole different reality than I was 12 years ago, even, even a year ago. Yeah. Um, I'm in a total new reality because I went through those stages and guess what? I'm also in the unaware stage for other things that are possible for me that I have no idea that they're possible for me. They just haven't, I haven't woken up to those yet. I don't know what I don't know. So we're all, we're all there on different, stages. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I love that you, you mapped out, you know, the process of it, because I think that really helps people to feel that you, you're right, like that nothing has gone wrong, right? You're not yeah. behind anybody because you have to, everyone goes through that same process of unawareness to awareness to bit of like, oh, what could I do? And being curious, right? The curiosity stage of play and experimentation, which I think is one of the most important things to do whenever you're yeah. like, I don't know what that else is or the next chapter is just literally play don't decide on anything you know because that's way too much pressure you know to to have yeah. get it right because we don't know ourselves as most of us have it's been so long since we've actually checked in you know taken an inventory check about our life of like what we loved what we don't love what was sort of conditioned what is actually truly what i desire don't e- just even that feeling of desire you know mm-hmm. like we, some mm-hmm. of us may not have felt that for many many years and so to get mm-hmm. back into that we have to sort of test things throw a few things in the wall see what sticks and sort of just be aware of what yeah. come into play when you think about that how do you feel when you hang out with that person how do you feel you know like when you're learning this thing how do you feel and that's all it's your job at that moment in time, not to decide it. where it goes, what it, and, you know, trust that the, the stages of change, uh, will happen for you. Right. But, but keep focus on that. Um, and I also love that you, you, you know, you, you didn't say just to manifest it. You're saying there's work to be done. There's commitment to the action. Like you're still consciously deciding on what that next step is for you, but being yeah. really responsible for that step. And, and it, like you said, immersion, and, and I look at immersion as commitment, you know, when you commit to an idea, you commit to a path is you go full in, you put, you put both feet in, not one foot in and one foot out and truly go for it. And even if it didn't work out, which has happened to me multiple times, and I'm sure to you too, but you can, that's still a relief because you can put certain ideas to bed, right? Or you can yeah. put certain desires to bed because you're like, well, I didn't actually really want that. And that's good. It's still good information, right? Yeah. To know what you don't want. Um, totally. So as, as people, you know, think about those very steps for themselves, right? Um, and they start to commit to this, this, this journey of self-exploration and, um, you know, finding out what they don't know that they should be knowing and talking to the more people. I mean, a lot of changes will happen. And I, I mean, that sure as hell happened in my life where I ended up, I stopped being friends with certain people. You know, I mm. stopped, um, hanging out in certain, uh, types of events. I start, my, my, my free time was changed as well because of mm. this new change. And that scared me quite a bit in the beginning. Cause I thought, Oh my God, it's just me changing. I'm going to lose everything that I've worked hard for because I've changed. And it is a scare, even though it's exciting, you know, it's what my, um, my, my, my guys call scare sighted, which is like scary and yeah. excited at the same time. <laughs> totally. Uh, and you're like, you know, it's, it's, it's quite, um, a identity crisis that can happen at that moment moment when we make big changes in our lives. Um, So Anne, what do you think um, are some sort of common like pitfalls or obstacles that we want, uh, we probably will experience when we actually decide to go after our else? Uh, What are those pitfalls people should be looking for? And also knowing that that's normal. Uh, And what is your advice about overcoming some of these things in the beginning of their journey to continue to sort of keep their eyes on the prize and not fall off the wagon because things feel scary? Yeah. I mean, I feel like obstacle number one is just quitting too soon. Mm. You know, um, it's like, it's a, it's a marathon. It's not a race. We all are, you know, some people are just seriously 
like two tweaks away from their total freedom. They just didn't look at it from that perspective, but then they go, Oh, if I just, you know, switch this out for that, all of a sudden there it is. And for others, um, you know, it's, it's, it, there's more that must be done. I mean, it's like, if you think about it, just like, um, anything like weight loss or something, it's like, if you can't go to the gym one day and then be mad cause you didn't lose 10 pounds. Right. You know, so this is, this is your life. And you, you said earlier, it's like the, the choice and the decision that is our place of power as creators, manifestors or whatever, like our little magic sauce is in the decision point, making a decision, but then following up with that decision with aligned action. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's that somebody hasn't, you know, maybe you haven't really decided that this is for you. It's kind of like, oh, maybe I'll start, stop eating so much dessert. Maybe I'll have more salads, but that's different than I am doing this thing. It starts this day. It goes for this long. I'm going to eat these foods and not these foods. And I'm mm -hmm. going to do, you know, so it's the same thing with your life. It's like making an, a, an empowerful decision for yourself. If you're, if you're, so the obstacle is giving up on yourself too soon. And the, the way around that is just to like, have a little meeting with yourself and make a decision um, that you're going to do it. Um, the other thing is, I would say another obstacle um, is getting overwhelmed because sometimes when we start down a path, we just realize it's like when you start to find out what you know, you start to know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. That pile of what you don't know can feel really huge. And it's like, Oh my God, I'm so far. There's so much to do. It's like, yeah. how do I put all that in place for myself? And, um, and so the, the problem with that is we can, again, stop ourselves. I mean, really, probably all of these obstacles boil down to just giving up on yourself too soon mm. um, and, instead of staying the course, you know? So if you, if that's the case and it's overwhelmed, it's like just giving yourself little, little wins and, um, one thing at a time, you know, um, one of the things that, steps. incremental steps, one yeah. of the things that we put in place, um, that I, I created a program called your Ro the roadmap to your else. And it's a mm -hmm. 90 day program that walks you through like um, basically how to get clear on what your else is and essentially backwards timelining it so that you know exactly where to put your energy every day so that you're moving towards it. Yeah. And um, there's something really powerful about that because you can't expect that you are where you want to be three years from now tomorrow and you yeah. can't get mad that it's not happening in a week, you know, mm -hmm. but when you know, when you, when you have that clarity though, AKA you've made a decision, you've made a choice. Like you've, you, you have the, you've determined that's the direction you're headed. When you're taking aligned action steps, every, every step of the way you, you will end up there. Like that's the direction you're going. And mm -hmm. maybe you'll end up looking a little different than you imagine, or maybe something else comes along that's even better that you couldn't have even thought of, but you're walking in that direction of your soul's path, of your heart's desire, of your mm. health, your freedom. So, I mean, yeah, I, I guess if I had to boil them all down, I'd say the, the main obstacle is just giving up on yourself too soon or, or, yeah. or like writing yourself off and going, that's for other people. That's not, that's for right. Me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you're, you're so right about that. I have so many people, I mean, because, you know, I help people launch new, new businesses and it's so unknown territory for people. So immediately when something gets hard, people go, oh, right, it's not for me. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not built like an entrepreneur. And it's like, well, of course, because you're, you're an intern right now for your company. <laughs> you know, you're, mm. you started at internship level in your own business, you know, and we, if we, in the real world, it took us however many years to climb that corporate ladder, right? To get that management role, to get that whatever promotions that we need to get. Um, that takes time of learning, being humble, being able to explore, right? Different versions of how you want to work. Uh, the same happens, I think, for your life. Um, but I, I love the fact that you said, you know, you have to decide because that is, that is such a big piece of the pie, isn't it? Deciding to decide. <laughs> deciding to decide. Deciding and if you decide. can ask yourself, like, what am I pretending I've decided that I haven't actually decided? Yeah. Sometimes we can catch ourselves like that. Like, oh yeah, I've said, like, I've said it a million times. Of course I've decided like just just ask just ask what am, what or if or if you find yourself confused you know i don't know mm -hmm. what i want i don't know it's like what do you know that you're pretending that you don't know right yeah <laughs> These are good questions we can ask ourselves yeah absolutely and i think when you decide that's you know what i find the definition of manifestation really kicks in because it's like when you have a thought and when you have a commitment to a thought and idea all of a sudden everything you see equals to that happening yes. 
You know, it's like when you buy a new car, like, you know, whenever I buy anything new, per, uh, you know, at all, a new piece of clothing or whatever that I buy, all of a sudden you see like 10 other people wearing it or the yeah. same car appears again. Like you're like, I never noticed that car before until I bought it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's sort of the same thing with your ideas about your, your, your life. It's like, once you decide that and you go, wow, I really want to be location independent. I really want to travel to Bali. I really want to do this or that. You end up meeting these people because your eyes are just more zoomed in and focused on finding the yeah. thing to match this new reality that you have now yeah. created in your head, right? Yeah, and that is totally magical. So manifesting is totally magical and it's practical. Like and it can practical, be, that's it. Yeah. It is practical. I'm a big fan of practical. And I would say that's another obstacle is like sort of thinking that, um, for example, financial freedom, that that's about lucky breaks or that's mm -hmm. about, even about, it's about making more money. Like it's not, it's, you know, like, just um, saying, oh, that's for other people, or that's impossible for me, or that I would have to get lucky, mm. or, or just letting it be a mystery, going like, that's just so mysterious. It might be mysterious, but it doesn't have to be. And yeah. so finding the practical, just, just, it, just going, make, like deciding in your head, the only thing between where I am now and where I want to be is a series of obstacles. That's it. It's like, okay, well then just go over the obstacles. obstacles. It's an obstacle yeah. course. Yeah. Obstacle <laughs> courses are supposed to be fun. People pay money to like go right. fly off of like things into piles of mud on these obstacle courses. So like we just, we get to do that. It's a series mm. of obstacles. And, um, and it's also just uh, one of those obstacles, meaning there's some information you just don't know yet, or there's some habits that you have in place that don't serve you, or there's mm. some new habits that you don't have in place that you might want to put in place for there's a few, um, you know, scary, sweaty uh, conversations you have to have or, you know, yeah. leaps. Like those are just, those are just obstacles standing between yeah. where you are and where you want to be. So if you decide that's where I want to be, again, that decision piece, then you just decide each obstacle you're going to go through that. You're going to, and, and just remembering that it can be practical. Like I yeah. think you and I are both so similar like that. Like it really can, you can have it. You can have what you want. Mm, um, absolutely. You just got to decide and, and, and find the, the container to support that and happening for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. that's a great ending to our interview. Decide to decide as the last overall oh, yes. message of the entire interview. Now, Anne, uh, I love that you shared that. Thank you again for coming on the show to do that. I think the work that you're doing, I mean, when I found out like last year, of course, I was one of the L Society sort of inaugural teachers. So, I know. Um, I love you. Exciting. I love uh, sharing I, you. Yeah. And I remember when you told me this new idea you're, you're, you're having and now that, you know, six months, eight months down the road has ha happened and you have this amazing group of people, almost like 500 members in your community um i we have more more than 500 we have oh, more, more like 600 oh my gosh mm -hmm. yay right yeah as of today <laughs> Um, and, and I love what you're doing because again, this is one of the things that I always wish could happen for people is having a community to support them, not, not think that they're crazy, <laughs> you know, have a place to be honest about their fears. And I think you're doing such an amazing work facilitating that group. Um, now for okay. people who are interested to learn more about your story, interested to connect with you, interested to learn more about L Society, where can they find you? Yeah, sure. So L Society, um, by the way, just, it is, it is a community. And then it's also, there's more to it. There's actual courses. Like we're teaching how to step-by-step -step create your freedom. Those right. type five types of freedom that I talked about. It's like, we're rolling up our sleeves and doing it together. Um, and I, by the way, don't have all those types of freedom in place yet. I totally have, um, home, home freedom envy right now. I'm like sort of in between spaces and I'm, um, but I'm excited. I'm going to Portugal in the fall, which with is me. Really awesome. But with yes. you, I know. <laughs> um, and then who knows where, right? But exactly. I, I'm like, I don't have that in place. Like there's, there are things I don't have in place. And so I'm doing this myself. I'm like, yeah. I want to learn this too. That's why we're pulling the people who know how to do it to teach it and going through it with each other. So mm -hmm. it's not just interesting conversation and inspiring you know, conversation. It's like, no, we're, we're just doing it. We're just going to go about, you know, they might say, Oh, that's not normal. That's not yeah. possible. We're like, okay, we're just going to do it though. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're up to. And you can, um, we open enrollment to L society twice a year. So right now at this exact moment, it's not open, but you can get yourself on the wait list, which I highly recommend because sometimes we sneak the wait list people in early. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and that's at elsesociety.com slash join. So um, maybe the link will be somewhere. It's E-L-S-E, elsesociety.com slash join. Perfect. And then um, in the meantime, if you want to check out Else Magazine, um, you can just find that at elsesociety.com. You'll, you'll see it right there on the homepage. There's a magazine you can dive into and dive into the articles that we have on there and that kind of thing. So I think that's yeah. probably the best way to go. Perfect. Well, thank you so very much again for giving your time. And I can't wait to see you in Lisbon. And if you can believe it, we've never actually met, which is weird, isn't it? Like we've been friends. Yes. I feel like we yeah. know each other like for such a long time, but we actually physically haven't been able to hug. So I can't wait to grab my bear paws around you and give you a real hug in real life and in person in Me Lisbon. Me too. It's gonna be I awesome. can't wait. And thank you so much for just what you do for the world, Lydia. I think your work is amazing and I think you're a genius. So oh. it's always an honor to be interviewed by you and yeah. we get to, yeah, we get to hang out and chat. collaborate it's better than that. Yeah, for sure. I know. <laughs> exactly. All right. Thanks. And thanks for coming on the show and see you later. Hey, thank you so very much for watching Screw the Cubicle TV. And don't forget to subscribe below to get all the latest cubicle crashing content on how to quit your nine to five and create a life and business on your own terms.